Hello everyone, Negligible Nerd here, and today I'm going to give a tutorial on how to load prefabs with scripts attached from an asset bundle. This is a topic in which there is little to no information available online as to how you would accomplish this, and it made trying to figure this out quite difficult, so I figured I would share the system that I came up with so that other people trying to attempt something similar can at least have something to reference showing how it works. And as a quick disclaimer, this will not work on iOS, but should work on other platforms. So to start things off, I'm going to show you the steps you need to take when creating the prefabs and asset bundles um, to get this all to work. This is just a standard Unity 3D project I opened here. And so the first thing we need to do is create a asset bundle builder. The Unity manual online has a very good explanation of how to set this all up. So I'll put a link here so you can go check that out if you need it, more information. Basically, you just create a script and copy in some code that is available on the Unity uh, documentation. And it creates a button that will allow you to build the asset bundles when you're ready to do so. So once you have that all set up, we can start looking at creating the actual prefab that we're going to want to put in an asset bundle and copy over. So start with just creating an empty game object and name doesn't really matter so for this project I'll just call it simple prefab and then I'm just going to add a cube to it so we have some visual indication of the prefab. For the script part of what we're adding I'm just going to make something simple to say switch the color of the cube when we click a button. So to do that I'm going to create a couple of materials one that I'm going to make red that I'll apply to the cube right away. And the second one I'm going to make blue that won't be attached to the cube. This will be the one we're switching back and forth between. Now once we have the material set up, it's time to create the script. Now normally you would just create the C-sharp script within Unity. But for this, instead, we are going to create it in Visual Studios to create a DLL file that we can then bundle up into an asset bundle. So we need to create a class library, and I'm just going to name it to Simple Assembly to keep things simple for us. Um, next, we need to make sure it's in .NET 2.0 as that's what Unity uses. And now that we have this open, we can create the script that we will be attaching to our prefab. So first we need to rename it to simple script and it will need to be a mono behavior. But that's not going to work because this assembly does not know about Unity, so we need to add that. So go to Project, Add References, go to Browse, and here you'll need to find where the Unity engine is, and it varies by platform. Um, but you can see here, do where it is on mine, and just find the Unity Engine.dll and add that. Hit OK. And now it will have the Unity Engine as a reference. So we'll add that in here using Unity Engine. And it's not working here, so I'll retry it. And there we go. Just 
missed the capital B. So now that's all working, we can actually create the script. So I'm going to create a public variable for the mesh renderer that will hold the materials. Then create a public material for the original material. And we'll create another one for the new material. So switching between the red and the blue. And I'll create just the pool so we know <clears throat> which one we're using at the time. And then in the update function, we will check for input of key down, uh, key code dot space. So when we press the space bar, we will check our bool to see if it's false. If it is, we will set the child mesh material to the new material. Nice and simple, and if it isn't, we will set it to the old material. And either way, we will switch the pool from, if it's true, we'll set it to false. If it's false, we'll set it to true. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, just very simple, just kind of proof of concept here. And then make sure to rename the script in the assembly so it matches. And this should work just fine. So we'll save it and then build it. Once you've built the solution, then you need to find where this is in your files. So I will pull it up here. All right, found it, so go into the bin, debug, the framework 2.0, and then you'll find the assembly.dll. So we'll want to copy that into Unity's assets here. And I'm going to create a folder for scripts. And then I will paste the DLL into here. So now when I open up Unity, it'll recompile. Taking its sweet time. Okay, there we go. So open it up here, you can see the assembly, and there's the script that we want, just the simple script. So I'll attach that to the game object and can now see the exposed variables. So we will set it the new material, the old material, and then the mesh renderer of the cube. So once we have that set up, do a quick test to make sure that actually works. And you can see when I hit spacebar, it switches back and forth between them nice and simple. So that's basically the prefab all set up. So I'll create a folder to hold that prefab. Just name it prefabs and drag it in. So with that all set up, now we can start setting up the asset bundles. So I'll create a new asset bundle path called bundle builds slash prefabs and we'll call it vanilla just the name of the file for it, for the actual asset bundle. And now we have to set one up for the script as well. But I found that the DLL doesn't quite load properly. So my workaround was to create a copy of the DLL and then switch it from .dll to .bytes. This just was a lot easier to load on the other side of everything. So this is just what I did. So now with the dot bytes file, we'll create a new asset bundle for that. So we'll call it bundle builds slash scripts slash vanilla. And it is important to keep these two in separate asset bundles because the scripts need to load before the prefab loads. And once you've done that, you can hit the build asset bundle, which 
is there from that script we made earlier from the Unity documentation. And now you will see a new file here, asset bundles, bundle builds, and then here's the prefabs asset bundle and the scripts asset bundle. So now that I have both of these working, we can move over into the new project, the main project where we want to load these. So first need to copy over these bundles into the main assets. So need to create a new file for streaming assets where we will stick them. And then within here to keep things organized, create a new folder and call these asset bundles. And then within here, we'll create the prefabs and the scripts where we will store both of the asset bundles. All right, with that, I will copy over the vanilla for the scripts bundle and do the same for the prefabs. So with that all set up, it's time to open up the new Unity, the kind of main project Unity. This open, you can see the streaming assets files all here. The asset bundles are both here. So good. Now we need to create a um, manager to handle loading these. So I'll create an empty game object called Asset Bundles Manager. And we'll add a component, create a new script called Asset Bundle Manager, and create an add. So with that, we will load it up. And didn't work, so we'll try it again here. And loading, here we go. So first thing is we can get rid of these two here and instead replace it with system.reflection, which is what we will need to um, re create the assembly from that dot bytes file. So create a couple of variables here, one for the actual prefab and the other for the assembly of the script we're going to be loading. So with that, we will now create, open up the void awake, which is where we are going to be loading the script assembly to make sure it gets done before we load the prefab asset bundle. So first we're gonna get a string um, that will get the path location of the script's asset bundle. So I'll we'll do the streaming asset path, plus we'll go into the asset bundles, and then into the script's file, and then we'll get the vanilla file. Next, we will grab an asset bundle, or the script's asset bundle, We'll do the asset bundle dot load from file and we'll try to load that string we just created. Next, we'll get a variable for the script text. This will be the just raw text file of the assembly dot bytes that we're getting from the asset bundle. So we'll load the text asset and we have to get the name of it. So we will type in the simple assembly. And it's important to add the dot bytes at the end of it. And then finally, we can create the script assembly. We will set it to 
assembly, so system.reflection.assembly.load and load the script text and dot bytes. So that will actually load the raw bytes into an assembly so that it's actually going to run it as a script. So that's all we need to do for the scripts and we'll move on to the prefabs which is very similar process. We'll do it in the start so it loads after the scripts. So again the string of the streaming assets path and then asset bundles and then prefabs and then the vanilla file. And then we will get the asset bundle for the prefabs and we will load it from file of that string. And then here we will use the prefab, the variable we set above, and it's equal to the prefabs.loadasset and this one will be a game object we're trying to load and then the name of it, so just simple prefab. And that should be all we need. That should load first the scripts and then the prefab after that so that the prefab knows about the script it needs to have attached to it. And so to make sure we can see this in the update function I will check for mouse down so when you left click we will then try to instantiate that prefab we just loaded and just that zero zero and with no rotation either just to get it into the world and with that it should spawn into the world and we should be able to switch the color from red to blue and back again just by pressing space like we were able to in the other project. So with that done it should all work and we'll give it a test back in Unity. Let it recompile and hit play. We are loaded, click, and there's the cube, hit spacebar, and can switch back and forth. Perfect. And so as you can see here, the, uh, the prefab is spawned in, and all of the variables carry over because the script was loaded first, so then the asset bundle, when we're getting the prefab loaded from it, it already knows it needs to add the script. It, that script is loaded, so it remembers everything. And that basically has it covered. With that all set, now the main project, all it has is the um, script that loads the asset bundles and the asset bundles themselves. But it doesn't have the script attached to the prefab, doesn't have the prefabs, all of that's just within the asset bundle. And we can load them into the game and it works just fine. So this is kind of system usually for creating mods, but obviously there are many other applications for it here. So that's kind of a basic overview of how to set something like this up. You can obviously add more to it, get more complex, but this should at least put you on the right path of what you need to do. I hope you like this little tutorial here and were able to learn something from it. Um, if the, you have any questions about it or if I didn't cover something and you would like some clarification on it, just leave a comment below and I'll try to respond to it as best I can. So, thanks for watching.